After days and days and days of moody weather, the sun is finally out and I'm gonna go take some landscape photos and it got me thinking, you know? Tutorial Tuesday. Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial this week. We're going to be talking about landscape photography. We're going to go through some tips on how to get better landscape photos. It's one of my favourite types of photography. I just think there's so much you can do with it. I love exploring new locations. I love trying to get the right light. I love trying to capture exactly what I want to get from this, colours, light composition, everything. It's so exciting. It's also one of those types of photographies you can take a little bit of time over. That's not always true because of things like moving sun and sunset and stuff like that. But generally speaking, the landscape's not going anywhere, which means unlike street photography or portrait or wildlife or something like that, you can take a little bit of time to find just the right angle, just the right composition to capture what's in front of you. And I love that. So with that all said, Let's dive into some tips to get better landscape shots. So the first thing I want to talk about is finding a subject within your landscape. It doesn't have to be glaringly obvious. It doesn't have to be some massive subject and blur everything else out. You know, it just has to be something that is anchoring your photo. Now, for example, in this photo, the subject is the actual pathway and the gate at the end. In this photo, it's the foreground element. It's the rocks with the seaweed and the water. In this photo, it's the road. And in this photo, it's the pier. It can be anything, and it doesn't have to take up a huge amount of real estate on your actual photo. It can be really small. But there needs to be a natural end point when you're, when you're looking at the photo, when you're kind of exploring it with your eyes. There needs to be a natural end point that your eye eventually comes to rest on in the landscape and that's the subject that you're looking for. I've certainly been guilty in the past of finding a really nice view and just sort of setting up and taking a photo and not thinking about what that natural rest point is, what that end point, the subject of this photo is. Just getting a view and you can't really put your finger on it but it, there's, there's a reason why the photo just doesn't work. It's just not really of anything, it's just of this view. And that doesn't really work as well as, as having a natural subject. Now, like I say, it can take up a large amount. So in this photo, St. Paul's Cathedral is obviously the, the actual subject of the photo, or it can be a little bit more subtle. Like in this photo, it's the river going through the photo that is the actual subject. But without it, when viewing the photo, your eyes won't know exactly where to look. You won't know exactly what you're supposed to be focusing on. And as much as you can explore the photo, of course, it's much easier to do that with a natural resting point for your eyes. Now that brings me on to tip number two, which is all about light. It's about finding the right light for your photo. And once you know what your subject is, it's much easier to work out how you want it to be lit. So generally speaking, when I'm talking about landscape photography, I usually recommend kind of sunrise or sunset as the best times of day to go out and shoot. That's because the tones in the sky look beautiful. The soft light looks beautiful on your subject, on your landscape. You know, you get really nice soft shadows it's directional light. It just looks really, really good. But that said, it doesn't necessarily suit every kind of photo. This photo, for example, was taken at my local kind of park with wildlife and stuff like that. And I had no choice but to shoot there in the middle of the day. It was a lovely sunny day. So I kind of positioned myself in such a way that the light wouldn't be super harsh and it would be falling more into the water and more into the trees and stuff like that. And I snapped the photo and I'm really, really happy with it. It's actually one of my favorite photos that I've ever taken. So you don't have to go out at sunrise or sunset. Yes, it's gonna look great for those big vistas. It's gonna look great for a lot of shots. This shot down at Dernaldor looks perfect at sunset because you've got those lovely golden tones in the sky, the golden light just, just flooding the whole area. The colors look great but it doesn't suit every single picture. I often find that from shooting under trees, you know, in a forest, something like that, then sometimes sunset isn't the best time. Sometimes you want the midday sun to be dappling through the leaves and things like that to get that really nice effect. But this works particularly well in conjunction with tip number one about finding a subject. You know, when you're thinking about lighting, when you think about how you want things to be lit, you can think about how the light is gonna fall onto whatever subject you've chosen. So if there is under trees, you might want the, the midday sun to be higher in the sky, so it's coming down through the trees. If it is out in the open, if it is a much wider landscape, you might want to use something like sunset to get more of a directional light onto your subject. With landscape photography, the sun is kind of your, your own light, and you have to choose when it's going to be in a certain position. So whether it's directional, whether it's top down, you kind of have to make that choice yourself. 
And that's really gonna affect not just the mood and the atmosphere of your photo, but just the, the, the overall look of it is gonna be improved by having the correct light. Now tip number three is all about composition. And this is such a big part of landscape photography. Earlier on, I said that it's nice because the landscape doesn't move, which means you can take all your time you want to set up a composition, but that is key. Getting the right composition for your landscape is so important. Now, a good way to start with this is by using just the rule of thirds. So just setting up yourself up in a situation where you've got the grid across your photo. A lot of cameras actually allow you to actually have that as an overlay on the rear screen or even through the electronic viewfinder as well. And, and use that to position, again, the subject that you've chosen just off to the left or to the right and, and maybe have the horizon up or down. Depending on the kind of shot you wanna go for, you might wanna have more sky or you might wanna have less sky, depending on whether the sky is, is a big factor. You know, is it, is it a dramatic sky? Is it a sunset? Is the foreground more interesting? Based on those kind of situations, you're gonna to wanna to move that horizon, not to have it center, but to have it up or below along one of those lines. Similarly with the subject, just position it off to one side and it's generally gonna look better. Now, once you're happy with the rule of thirds, you can move on to things like leading lines, which help guide the eye through the photo, it can really make a big difference. And as subtle as they may be, they look so, so good and just make such a huge difference to the overall photo. That leads me to something else I wanna talk about when it comes to composition, which is layering your photo, having multiple layers and depth to your image. Now, of course, you'll have your subject as the kind of main focal point of the image. And then you've got a background. So that could be the sky, could be forest, could be cliffs, could be anything at all. But what if you have a foreground element as well, which is out of focus? It's just framing your subject. Now, we've talked about framing before in photos. In fact, we've got a whole tutorial Tuesday video all about subframing which you should definitely go and watch if you, if you haven't seen, because it's very interesting about how you can use natural things in the environment to actually frame your subject. And that's absolutely the same here in landscape photography. You know, whether you shoot through some plants, some bushes, some grass, some tall grass, for example, make a great foreground element, whether you use some natural structure to shoot through to the actual wider landscape, the vista, that can all work really, really well. And that's an important part of composition. You're choosing what technique you wanna to use to maximize your photo and ultimately guide the viewer's eye to your subject. Now that leads me on to tip number four, which is all about angles and kind of changing your own perspective on what you're photographing. So it's very easy to just photograph at eye level. You just stand there, photograph at eye level. And a lot of tutorials, a lot of people will tell you that you shouldn't do that. I actually think that it's perfectly fine. A lot of the time, shooting just at your eye level for a landscape photo can look absolutely fine, can look great in fact. There's certain situations, like this one for example, of this kind of pathway down to this gate, where I think eye level is the right height to be shooting that from. I think it's the right angle to choose. You know, it creates a very natural look and it feels like you're actually looking through onto this kind of pathway leading over to the gate. But I do agree that that's not always the case. And sometimes it can be good to get high or lower. Now let's talk about lower for a second. If you get nice and low to the ground, you can actually use that ground almost as a foreground element leading up to your subject. If that's water, if that's an interesting texture, that's gonna look great. That's a really, really good way of kind of uh, adding an extra bit of specialness to this photo. And of course, similarly, Sometimes it's worth walking 20 minutes up a big hill to get an, a different viewpoint, a, a viewpoint looking down onto a landscape. That works really, really well for a river, for example. If you're looking down onto a river or onto, I mean, this photo again from Durdledor, if you're looking down, you're climbing up the hill, looking down onto this, this hill and the sea and you've got the sunset, you actually get a better viewpoint than if you were down there trying to take a photo of something else or looking up. It just, it gives you a different, unique perspective on the situation. So we talked about light, we talked about angles, we talked about finding a subject and composition as a whole, but something else I wanted to talk about, which, which I've been thinking about a lot recently, and it's taken me a long time as a photographer to kind of get my head around, is the idea of expectations versus actually being there in the moment. So for example, I'm gonna use this one example that I've used a few times, the Door photo. Now, if you're not familiar with Door, it's this really beautiful rock art right down on the Dorset coast. It's right going into the sea, and for photographers, it's a great location. So when I was in Dorset, I wanted to go take a photo, I wanted to go down there at sunset. But when I was there, there were loads and loads of people down at the arch taking a photo of the arch itself. And of course I went down there to check it out, but it didn't actually strike me as the best composition for the area and for the time of day and with the light and things like that. And I went back up the hill 
and actually ends up getting a photo from up here with this perspective looking down on kind of the really nice, the green, the golden grass, the, the golden kind of light coming in from the right. The sea was a beautiful blue color and you can barely even see the actual rock arch. But that's because I actually took the time to look around at my actual surroundings and choose a composition based on what I could see in the moment, as opposed to my expectation of being there, get the photo of Dirtle Door and kind of move on, which is what I would have done when I first started out in photography. I would have just gone, I knew what I wanted, I would have got the photo of the arch and then I would have moved on. But because of experience and things like that, I actually looked around and chose the composition that I thought looked the best. And I think that's really important with landscape photography. If you're heading out to take a photo of the sunset, it can be easy to get it into your head that you are going to get the photo of the sunset and that's it, that's what you're going to get. And you wouldn't even think about turning around and looking at maybe what that golden light is shining onto. But that can be such a huge, huge kind of missed opportunity if you don't take the take the time to look around at different things that you maybe weren't expecting so you've got to kind of get those expectations out of your head and really live in the moment as corny as that sounds of what you're actually taking photographs of now i hope you found all these helpful if you do have any tips of your own because we've kind of gone into a little bit of detail here but uh, there's loads of different tips you can go for. Pop them down in the comments below. I love hearing about all the kind of different tips you guys have. If you like the video, make sure to give it a like. Make sure to subscribe as well and all that cool stuff. Thanks very much for watching. Of course, I will see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.